Hey there, good morning, good evening, good whatever time you're watching this at. Welcome to yet another Pipe Dream speed run. Uh, this week is very special because this week is gonna be our first IoT episode. So this is a counter that will actually flip these numbers to whatever number you define in um, webhook, which is perfect for Pipe Dream. Uh, it's called a Smurl, and this is the Shopify counter edition. And we're gonna be using it to track live transactions from a Shopify app. And on top of that, we're gonna be debuting a brand new feature here at Pipedream called a data store, which you can use in your workflows. So let's get started. Here is a brand new workflow on Pipedream, and we're going to create a webhook trigger that Smurl can communicate with. Let's go ahead and click continue, and here's a brand new URL we can copy. We'll go back to our Smurl dashboard, and we will enter it right here within our settings for the counter. Now the counter knows to go back to pipe dream and look for a JSON object with an attribute number in it. Now that we have Smurl communicating with our workflow, we can go ahead and create a new Node.js step that will return an HTTP response that contains the JSON that Smurl can understand. So we're gonna go ahead and make the a call to the respond helper and the body needs to contain the attribute called number. That's how Smurl knows where the number is. And let's just set it to zero just to start and just make sure that we leave a status of 200. We'll test this very quickly and then we'll click deploy. Uh, you can't forget to await this. Await the respond because it's a asynchronous method here. We'll deploy this and then we'll go over to Smurl <laughs> it already started working, actually. You can hear the ticker moving. So what happened was Smurl asked this URL that we created for a number, and when it opened up the URL, it gave a number of zero, which updated our ticker, or counter, to zero. All right, now Smurl is updating in real time to whatever number we provide here in our webhook. But going in here and updating it manually is not very fun nor cool. Let's just change that. So we'll bring in a brand new data store. Like I mentioned in the beginning of this video, this is a new feature and we're going to call it data. And we'll say the type of this uh, attribute is a data store. Now a data store is like a simple key value storage utility where we can go ahead and retrieve data within this webhook. So we'll say the number is equal to uh, data.get, get it, get is to get data from the data store. And we'll call it just number. And if, it, if number doesn't exist, we should probably default to zero. It's probably a good idea. And then we can remove this now number is retrieving its value from our data store. To include a data store, we have to actually click test. This will open up a new prop called data, and we can create a brand new store. Let's just name it a uh, Smurl number. And now it created a brand new store for us to use for this workflow and other workflows. One minor problem with my step here, uh, you'll see this error message down here, data is not defined. That's because, well, data is not defined. We are, we're introducing the steps variable and the dollar sign variable, which contains utilities for the step, but props like up here are injected under the, the this. This is the instance of the step and we're injecting a data prop which is available at this dot data. All props are available under this dot. Now we'll run it again. Voila. The body says number zero. So we're defaulting to zero because number doesn't exist yet. Let's fix that. So I'm actually gonna create a separate workflow that's only responsible for updating the real-time value in our data store. So we're gonna name this one uh, Smurl Webhook just so we remember that this is responsible for being the webhook. I'm gonna deploy the changes we have right now too while we're at it. This next workflow we're gonna create is responsible for actually retrieving the data that we want to put into the data store. So like I said, this is gonna be a Shopify partner integration. We're going to listen to transactions on our Shopify apps. Whenever a new app charge is 
created by one of your apps, let's update our counter. So I'm just gonna pick my test Shopify account here. We're gonna update it every 15 minutes. We'll create this source. So unlike the webhook trigger, which is triggered by HTTP requests, this is a polling source that's asking Shopify every 15 minutes to see if there's any new transactions on the given Shopify partner account. And let's try it now. Let's get some test events in here. Cool, we got lots of events to play with. We're gonna pick one of these and we're going to create another step, a Node.js step. And we're going to inject our, our new store. We'll call it data again. We'll say type is a data store and make sure to add that comma there. Click test. This will run the props and inject them into the step. And voila, look at that. We can pick our Smurl number store that we used in the previous workflow. Get rid of this over here. So we're going to take the latest event. We should first grab the current number, right? So that way we can add it, add the next number to it. So we'll get use the set method this time and we'll say get the number, or sorry, we'll get the number, not set the number. And if it doesn't exist, make it zero. Then we can say within the steps, there's the trigger event, the trigger step, get the event under the trigger. And then from in there, I know that the net amount dot amount contains the actual dollar amount right here. I can just copy path. That makes it a little bit quicker. So instead of typing it all out like I just did, you can just copy path and paste. It's the same result. Now, if you notice, these are decimals, which Smurl doesn't have decimals. I'm just gonna round this number. Uh, this should round it to the nearest whole number. So we'll say amount equals this, make a brand new variable. And now we could say the new number is equal to the addition of number plus the amount. Now, the one thing that I want, I'm just concerned about is the possibility that these are interpreted as strings and not as numbers. So the best way to fix that is to say parse int on this side. Well, let's just wrap this whole thing with parse int. And here, since this should be a float before it becomes a, a uh, before it's rounded, we should say parse float this. And I'm just being extra cautious here. It's probably not necessary, but I'm just gonna say parse int as well around this. So now we have this new number that should for sure be a integer, because I'm crazy like that. And then we will set the data. So instead of using the get method like I showed you before, we can use the set method on the data store. We'll say set number equal to the new number. Voila. So that's, that's it. Now this code will run at 15 minute interval. It'll emit every time a new transaction is found and then it will add the numbers to the data store under the, the keyword number. So hopefully when I click test here, we don't get any bugs, but we can fix those, no problem. Property get of undefined. So I, I just have a hard time accessing uh, data stores, I guess. The correct name was data, not db. Test it again. <laughs> and it looks like the counter is already updated again. 